All right, shalom, shalom, shalom. All right, first and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to the Most High God. Kahalah Benawi Yahweh, Ba'ashem Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. That's all praises to the Most High God, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. All right. Um, again, hey, look, this is uh, your brother Ra'am uh, from Yahweh's camp, the captain of Yahweh's camp. <clears throat> uh, definitely want to come through and, and do a very, very good lesson. I believe this will be a very good lesson. I believe this is going to be a very uh, edifying lesson on how we can simply, we can simply fix black and brown problems literally overnight. I'm going to say that again. This video is geared to how to properly fix black and brown problems overnight. All right. So get your notepads out, take some notes. Okay. Uh, this is going to be very edifying through the spirit of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right. Again, the lesson is, the title of this lesson is how to fix black and brown problems overnight, because we need the most help when it comes to nationalistic issues. All right. Um, so first and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Most High for just putting the spirit on me to do this lesson. I want to do a mighty shalom to all the camps that's out there on the highways and byways uh, doing this work in truth and in sincerity. Uh, mighty shalom to y'all brothers. Shalom to the elders, the Akim, the cap over at Yahweh's camp doing this work in truth and sincerity. Uh, again, shalom to the brothers that's uh, coming into this truth. Shalom to you sisters that's coming into this truth. Shalom to all the people that's coming in this truth, that's looking to do a work, that's looking for a camp, that's looking for answers. Please subscribe to this channel, like, share, subscribe as much as possible, all right? Again, we are looking, this lesson is to how to fix black and brown problems, all right? So shalom to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. If you are a so-called Latino, Native American, or so-called African American of indigenous descent, again, from indigenous descent, it's not about your skin color, it's not about your phenotype, hair color, or hair texture, right? It's all about your bloodline, who you go back to, to the 12 tribes of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the 12 uh, uh, tribes of Israel, all right? Again, so let's get into it, right? I want to get a, a, a quick precept real quick because your pastor is not going to teach you this information. Your church is not going to teach you this information, all right? If you've been listening for the last few weeks when I've been putting videos up, I always like to start off with Isaiah chapter 62, verse 10. Why, right? Why are we going to Isaiah 62 and 10? Well, someone has to lift up a standard for the Most High God, right? And he ordained and he actually chose men from birth to go out on the highways, on the byways, uh, to push his worth and to push this word in truth and in sincerity. All right, hallelujah. All right, this is Isaiah 62 and 10. It says, go through, go through the gates, prepare ye the way of the people. So my job, and all the brothers are jobs out here. That's if you find a camp, if you find a congregation and they teach, thus saith the Lord, our job is to prepare the way for the people. This is why we come out there on the highways and byways and teach the words of God. That's why you see camps blossoming and popping up all over because our job is to teach the words of God. It says, cast up, cast up the highway, gather out the stones, lift up a standard for the people. It's our job to lift up the most high standard for the Israelites, all right, to the 12 tribes that are scattered abroad, all right? <clears throat> so with that being said, and again, shalom to y'all brothers that has the, the courage to go out there and put your doctrine on the line. Shalom to the brothers that has the courage to go out there and teach his word. And shalom to the sisters as well. I can't forget the sisters that are at home um, uh, raising up the children, at home taking care of the household, doing their job, as women of the Most High God, Shalom to y'all sisters, because y'all make life a lot easier for the brothers that has this work to do. All right, so Shalom to the righteous sisters that allow their men, or not allow, right, but are are on board with their men going out there and putting this word in truth and sincerity. You'd be surprised how many calls I get, um, brothers that can't teach this word because their sis, the, the woman, the, their wife, right, the sisters are bucking up against. The ministry, all right. So for y'all sisters that's out there uh, and, and and on board with this doctrine, on board with this Bible, on board with thus said the Lord, shalom to y'all sisters as well. Y'all have a very important role uh, when it comes to this truth and when it comes to the ministry of the Most High God. All right. So I want to get Matthew twenty two and nine. All right. Matthew twenty two and nine says, "Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, 
bed to the marriage. This is Christ. He gave a commandment to his disciples and anyone that calls themselves a disciple of Christ or a disciple of God must understand that your job is not to internalize this information. Your job is to go out there and evangelize, right? It, whether you have a YouTube channel, whether you are talking to someone at your workspace, whether you actually go and you join a camp, your job is to get this word out there to so-called black and brown people, all right? Again, it says, go ye therefore into the highways and as many as you shall find, bid to the marriage, all right? We gotta go out there and bid or find ways to make this truth desirable, okay? For other people that don't know that they're Israelites to then come into the fold and be grafted in. A lot of times, a lot of our people that understand this Bible and, and, and understand the truth, calling themselves Israelites, make this truth undesirable. It's our job to make this truth desirable and for them to want more. It's called feeding the sheep, right? So again, Christ says, Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. Anybody that want to hear this truth, that's why you got the YouTube channels up. That's why you got a Facebook page dedicated to this truth. And look, when I came into this truth, I decided I was going to make my life the ministry of the Most High God and the ministry of his son, Hamashiach Yahweh All right, let me get uh, Luke 12 and 35, right? Luke 12 and 35. Again, this shouldn't be long. This is to the point. Again, how to fix black and brown problems? Simple. We must first go and evangelize first and foremost. You can't fix black people problems by just staying at home and being a home alone or being a, a, a brother that's only in the house doing the work of God. Right. You know why? Because two thirds of our people make up the majority of our, our people group. So that means we need a lot more people to understand this truth for us to hurry up and get this salvation and get up out this wicked kingdom to get up out of Esau's kingdom especially if you're in the Americas, right? This is Luke 12 and 35. It says, let your loins be girded about. Meaning if you're going to do this work, your loins must be girded about. If you're going to be doing this work, you must not only have thick skin, but you have to be sound in your doctrine. You have to be obedient to this doctrine. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. What does Christ mean when he says, let your lights be burning? Well, you got to understand to have a light burning, you must need fuel, right? The fuel that burns light is something called oil. So if you have oil in your candlestick, right? Then your light is going to burn. If your light burns hot, it's got to stay hot. You're going to have ups and downs, but as long as you have oil in your candlestick, your lights will continue to burn, okay? Verse 36 says, And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord, when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Very important to open up to Yahweh while Yahweh shy immediately. Meaning, if you are living correctly, right? If you're living this word and you're internalizing this word, digesting this word, and then you're able to regurgitate and to teach this word, then you must have the mindset that when Christ come knocking at that door, you have the sound, you have the confidence in your doctrine and what you've been doing to open up to Christ immediately. The ones that take a long time, and we talk about this all the time, right? When someone's knocking at the door and you don't want to open that door, you're either afraid, it's a bill collector, it's the landlord wanting his money, you kind of, you act like you're not home. Turn the lights out, turn the TV off, right? You try not to make a noise, Sometimes the wood in your house or the, 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 the beams in your house may creak a little bit. So you sit still, right? Brothers are like this when, when that landlord wants his money. When that, when, that, when that bill collector come, you, you, you're not opening the door immediately. Christ is telling you to open the door immediately. So if you have that confidence, right? And I'm just giving an analogy. But if you have that confidence in your doctrine and what you're saying and you live in it correctly, you're keeping the laws of God, right? you abstaining from things. And let me just be honest, right? Our doctrine is also about what we don't do as opposed to what we do do. What do I mean by that? We keep the feast days, right? We keep the high holy days. We keep the Sabbath days, 
We go to camp. We do all we we do our prayers four or five times a day. But are but are you eliminating things that you're not supposed to do? You still smoking, right? You can do all the right things, but if you still a lust in lust, or if you still a whoremonger, or if you still a, a basher, or if you're still a liar, all these things that literally bring down the black and brown community. And I, when I say black and brown community, I'm using a colloquial term. All right, Israel. So when you hear this. I don't want to hear anything in the comments about, well, we not black, we not brown. These are colors in the crowd. I'm saying colloquially speaking, right? Black and brown people, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. These are the things that we embrace that literally tear our, our nation down. Lies, adultery, idolatry, marriages, not having the proper structure of marriages, owing money, dishonoring your mother and father, right? Stealing, covetousness, all these things tear our foundation, our whole nation down, all right? So if you live in that life secretly and then you go into camp, you got all the precepts, you got all the, 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 the breakdowns, all these things, but secretly at home, when no one's looking, you're an idolater, you're a whoremonger. These are the things that continue to, to delay our salvation and ultimately can get you spewed out this thing, all right? So it's not so much of what you... What you're doing, of course you want to do these things correctly. You want to keep the feast days. You want to have love for your brother. You want to marry your wife. You want to do these things. But you also got to eliminate things that can bring us down. All right? So look at verse 36 again. It says, And ye yourselves, like unto men that wait for their Lord, when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Right. If you expecting Christ to come and you live in life like you're supposed to do, you ain't got no problem. You're going to open that door up immediately. That's what it's saying. Right. Here. That's what Christ is, is trying to tell us. All right. Verse 37 says, blessed are those servants. Right. Whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Think about that. Right. When Christ comes, no one knows when Christ going to come. But when Christ comes and he finds you watching, you're doing the right things. You living things correctly. You doing these things. Uh, you on point. You own your square, right? So to speak. You doing everything you're supposed to do. Blessed is that man or or that woman, right? It says, "Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when He cometh, shall find watching." Verily I say unto you, that He shall gird Himself and make them to sit down at meat, and will come forth and serve them. All right. So let's think about these things. This is why you're seeing brothers out there teaching this word, right? And you brothers that want to teach this word, all right, be careful, right? We're going to get into that in the following weeks, right? Be careful on what you signed up for. I'm going to just leave it at that, all right? Let's move on to John chapter 4, all right? Let's move on to John, the fourth chapter, the 13th verse. This is John chapter 4, verse 13. Yahweh shall answer this, said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. So the woman at the well, right? Let's just give it some context so people understand when we, why, why he's talking about physical water and spiritual water. All right. So let me read it again. Yahweh shall answer this, said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. So when we talk about this water, right? Let's look at this water bottle. You can drink this last couple of liters of milliliters of water or ounces of water. Right. You're going to be thirsty in the next two, three hours. Right. So what Christ is saying is that physical water. Right. You're going to thirst again. Look at verse uh, 14. He says, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Right. You might be asking, Ram, why, why are you bringing this out? Why are you bringing out uh, thirsting physical water versus this spiritual water? Well, our job, right? If you're a teacher, a reader, you stand in post, you go into camp. Um, hell, you can you can teach uh, the the gospel by your example, right? And I highly encourage brothers that's coming in this truth to teach by example first and foremost. Before you get that, the 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 uh, the, the authority to go out there and tell your mother, father, uncle, and you only been in this truth a month, two, three months. Lead by example first. Start putting things away that used to plague you, right? If you had a problem with smoking, 
Let your family see that you don't smoke weed anymore, right? If you got a problem with idolatry or fornication or lust, let your friends see that transition in you, right? That's how you can give spiritual water, right? And I'm going to bring it home right here. It says, uh, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. What is this water that we're talking about? We're talking about the spirit of the Most High God. We're talking about the, the, the doctrine that the Most High has given us, right? The, the willingness to be obedient, right? The, the spirit of the Most High, all right? So when you get this, this, this living water that Christ is talking about, you'll never thirst again. This is what Christ was telling the sister um, in John chapter four at the well. You're gonna drink this water that our father Abraham uh, has, has given us, right? Um, or so I can think it's Jacob, right? Then you gotta, yeah, Jacob. Then you gotta understand that the spiritual water that I give you, you'll never thirst again because you're gonna take this understanding and adhere to it, right? Let me get a precept real quick. Right, let me get Psalms chapter one, right? I love Psalms chapter one, right? It's one of my favorite scriptures right here. It says, uh, do, 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 do. this is Psalms chapter one. I'm gonna get verse two, get right to it. But his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law doth he meditate day and night, right? So we gotta understand that you must meditate on the law day and night if you wanna stay in the spirit. If you wanna stay built up in this thing, have your mind meditating on the laws of God on the testimonies of the Most High God. Verse three, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. So any tree that's by water, right, is a healthy tree. If you're a tree and you're in a desert, you ain't gonna last long because there's no water, right? That bringeth forth his fruit, so in, in his season. So think about this, a tree that's planted by a river or a lake, they're gonna have healthy fruit because the water helps nourish the soil that soil is real is bent up, built up. And then what happens is the fruit benefits from the soil. The soil benefits from what? The water. And then ultimately the fruit and the strength of that tree has its benefit. And it all goes back to that water. This is the anal the spiritual analogy that we're going into, right? But it's also a physical truth. Just type in trees by water, or just go by a tree by a lake. Look at a tree by water and you're going to see how strong and how fruitful that tree is. It says that bringeth forth his fruit in season. His leaf, his, listen, listen, his leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So again, when we're talking about the water, we're talking about the things that's going to strengthen ourselves if we are the, the spiritual tree. As a spiritual tree, right, we're going to be stronger. We're going to have you're going to see the fruit that we bear, right? You see brothers out there bringing out good, good, good precepts, good caps, good doctrine, good videos, so forth and so forth, right? But if you a tree and you over in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the desert, right? Where there's no water, where there's nothing to strengthen that soil, then that tree is not going to yield fruit. That tree is going to have weak branches, weak boughs, and that leaf is going to wither, all right? I hope brothers can understand that. All right, let me get Isaiah 44. Here's an, uh, another precept that I like to bring, bring out or a scripture that supports it, right? This is Isaiah 44 from the top. It says, yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel whom I have chosen, thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou Jeshurun whom I have chosen. Verse three. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. Again, we're talking about spiritual water, right? The Most High is going to give us water, which is the what? Which is what? The word, right? <clears throat> the water is the word, the understanding and, and uh, the doctrine of this word. And the Most High says, I will pour floods upon that, water, that dry ground. A lot of our people have, are on dry ground, stony ground, right? There is no nourishment. There is no nutrients in their in their, in their their doctrine. You see what I'm saying? So it says, I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring, and they shall spring up among the grass as willows by the watercourses. And this is why you're seeing a lot more camps 
right? This is the acknowledgement on why we have so much more camps coming up because that water is coming out. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, uh, net, you name it, right? Guys on the highways and byways that's, that's teaching this word and, and helping marriages out, right? Shout out to uh, last week when we were able to teach a brother and his wife, right? Go check it out on your house camp where we were able to teach a brother and his wife and they, they understood it. You can see the light flick on. We sowed a seed. And hopefully somebody else can come by and water that seed and then that plant can, can blossom and grow. All right. And this is what you're seeing now. A lot of us are understanding that we're Israelites. As Esau's kingdom is falling down by the day, globally, globally, Israel is springing up. Right. Read verse four again. This is Isaiah 45 and four. And they shall spring up among the grass as willows by the water courses. Verse five. One shall say, I am the Lord's, and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. And don't you see that now? Don't you see Israelites? I, I mean, I'm telling this story all the time. Every time, every time I look on my Facebook, my friends are, have last names Israel or Jacob or Yasharala, right? Even when they say uh, uh, Hebrew names, right? You see people with Hebrew names. Everybody is getting rid of their English or their government names and embracing the name of Israel. And all praise to the Most High for that. This is prophecy coming to pass, right? We see it right here in Isaiah 45 and 5. One shall say, I am the Lord's, or I am Yahweh's, right? And another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. And another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord, unto the Most High, and surname himself by the name of Israel. Hey, look, y'all brothers are doing a really good job out there teaching this word, putting videos up, burning the midnight oil with the with the with the YouTube channel and then going live and all that. I, I I love them brothers for that, man. I love all Israel that's going out there and teaching this word and truth and in sincerity. All right? Sincerity, Salakium. All right. Again, how to fix black and brown problems overnight? You gotta first understand that you're more than just being black. You're more than just being brown. You're more than being a savage. You're not a rich port. You're not a mountain in hills, right? Or a, 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 a wood and water, a, a people of wood and water. All these names, Jamaican, Haitian, Puerto Rican, Mexican, uh, Indian, Negro, all these different terminologies that was on our people, right? On our people to name you by. When you start taking that away, you no longer call yourself black, but you call yourself Israel. You call yourself Yasharala, and you start going to the feast days, going to new moons, going to the uh, to the, um, uh, uh, summits, right? Start speaking that Hebrew. Now you become more prideful, right? And who you are and who your forefathers used to be, right? And this is how you fix black and brown problems. First of all, you got to get the foundation of who we are. Start putting pride to our people's names. Put some respect on your name, black man. Right. Put some respect on your name. Latino, Native American. What? Right. East Indian. I mean, West Indian, Haitian, Puerto Rican. Right. Start doing that. So let's get Isaiah 51 verse 17. Again, how to fix black and brown problems overnight. Again, let's get the foundation first. Everything has to be structured properly. You don't build a cake from the top to the bottom. You build it from the bottom to the top. So what I want to first do is lay a foundation. The first way that we, um, let me just make a note here, right? Because I want to go back and we're going to review this through the spirit. All right. First thing, how we fix the problem. Okay. Understand who we are. Right. When you understand who you are, what proceeds after that is love for that other brother. Right. I came in this truth. I used to be a quick story about me. Right. I used to be I'm still introverted. Right. Naturally. Right. I'm introverted. Some people are extroverts. Right. Some are introverts. So it wasn't that I didn't like other brothers. But I'm introverted. And then when you get to know me, then I'm, I'm not so much. So I came into this truth four four years ago, coming up on five. 
And when I came into this truth, I became more out, uh, uh, outgoing when it comes to other so-called black and brown men, right? Hey, what's going on, bro? Hey, what's going on, sis? How you doing? Nothing too crazy. Just, hey, what's going on? How you doing? Yada, 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 right? So, and that's because I started looking at my brothers with love. Even though they didn't have fringes on, even though they were bugged out their mind, I realized I'm an Israelite. Other so-called black men are Israelites. I got love for them, brother. Hey, how you doing? Let me give you this flyer. This is who we are. This is who you are, right? So understand who we are first and loving that nation. That's the first thing. All right. I want to get Isaiah 51, 17. It says, awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem. And this is why we are out there again to awaken our people, right? Awaken our people. When you go out there and you teach this love, this truth with love, humility, sincerity, single parent households, and try to fix that, how to rectify single parent household. But let me show you that in the curses of Deuteronomy 28, 54. I believe it's 54, right? Uh, uh, how about this? Lack of money and resources, right? These are the things that plague our people. We got to awake our people on how to start bettering themselves, right? No representation. Who represents the so-called black man, the Latino man at the UN on the table of nations and all these different uh, meeting places? We don't have any representation. So we got to awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem, which has drunk at the hand of the Lord. The cup of his fury, thou hast drunk in the dregs of the cup of trembling and wrung them out. And that's heavy, right? When you get a cloth and you wring out, right, those, those that, that fury, that, that liquid fury we're talking about. We talked about water at first, but this liquid is, is the liquid, the, the fury, right? The recompense, the curses of Deuteronomy, the curses of Leviticus 26 chapter. And we wrung them out. We drank every bit of 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 recompense and trembling and fury that the most high can offer right verse 18 there is none to guide her among all the sons whom she had brought forth neither is there any that taketh her by the hand of all the sons that she hath brought up these two things listen to this verse 19 this is again isaiah 51 and 19 these two things are come unto thee who shall be sorry for thee Desolation and destruction and the famine and the sword. Think about this. Desolation and destruction, the famine and the sword. All right, the famine and the sword. This is why we lead the nation, the world, for that matter, in black on black violence, poverty, no resources, no money, uh, uh, hatred towards each other, right? Look at our music. Our music is literally geared to further white supremacy. Rap music is geared to further white supremacy. Even R&B music, when you really look at the lyrics behind it, it's geared to further white supremacy and we're gonna explain it. Just stay patient, listen, take notes, and we're gonna come back and circle on why that is so, all right? And we've drank it at the hands of the Most High's fury. That's all you see going in. We say all the time, go on any MLK Boulevard from California to New York, from Texas up to Massachusetts. Anywhere in the hood, you're going to see God's fury uh, towards his people. That's how you know we the Israelites, because we're drinking from that cup of affliction by our disobedience and our lack of wanting to be spiritually fed. All right. Verse 18 says, there is none to guide her among all the sons whom she hath brought forth. Neither is there any that taketh her by the hand of all the sons that she hath brought up. All right. Then it gives you those two things again, right? Again, desolation, destruction, and the famine. All right. All praise to the most high. I'm going to stop right there. Uh, well, let me get verse 20 because it's, it's even, even more uh, descriptive. It says, thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets. As a wild bull in a net, they are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of thy power, right? The rebuke of thy God. And, and that's, just, that's just so amazing because if you want to know who the Israelites are, just read the Bible. No other nation can, can fit into this stuff, man. Not, no other nation can fit and call themselves any of these things. Nobody. 
except for the so-called black, brown, and Latino. And this is uh, and Native American. This is why we're going to teach a lesson, right, through the spirit on how to fix this overnight. All right. So, so with that being said, I just want to just go ahead and just definitely uh, bring out and set the table, so to speak. Let's get Leviticus 26 and 14. Let's get Leviticus chapter 26, verse number 14. All right. It says, but if you will not hearken unto me, meaning if we don't listen, right, and will not do all these commandments, Mosai gave us a list of commandments to be obedient. And if you shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that you will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. And the Most High is going to give all the things that you, myself, the Native American, the Latino can all identify with, right? What are some of these things, right? Again, we went into single parent households. Who leads the world in single parent household? Black and brown people, right? Who leads the world with, with no representation? You can go to Singapore, a third world country. They still have representation. The Philippines has representation, right? Uh, uh, Indonesia, certain parts in Africa, they all have what? represent Libya, right? They all have, they all represent people. Who represents the, 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 the best people on the planet? What? America, right? America's the only nation that claims that they represent our people, but that nation that claims that they represent our people still says that the Negro is two thirds of a human. The two, the, the uh, three-fifth compromise, sorry, three-fifth compromise, right? So the people that claim that they represent you makes you uh, less than human, right? You're, you're still looked at less than human. That's who represents our people. So we really don't have representation here in the Americas, right? It says, uh, again, Leviticus 26, 16 says, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror. Don't we qualify for that? Terror, right? Go to the border for some of y'all that don't believe that the Latino are Israelites, Go into the borders and you tell me that they not Israelites, that the Latino ain't at the border in cages, locked up, living the curses of Deuteronomy, living the curses of Leviticus 26. Consumption, right? And the burning agoo that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And you shall sow your seed in vain for your enemies shall eat it. All right. Now, let me jump over to uh, verse 17. Let me just read on. And I will set my face against you, and you shall be slain before your enemies, right? They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursueth you. And if you will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. And I will break the pride of your power, and I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass. And that's heavy. That last part is heavy. Your heaven as iron. Iron is a, a very very hard substance, an element, right? Iron. So your ceiling that you can get to, you're, you're still going to be as iron. It's going to have a hard ceiling and your bottom, your earth will be brass. You're going to literally be stuck. This is the curses of, of Leviticus. You're going to be stuck between two hard elements because I believe, uh, I think uh, brass is another metal that it, again, is, uh, is damn near indestructible. So you really can't break past that barrier. You're going to be marginalized no matter how successful you are. You're still going to be marginalized. This is how we know who, who we're talking about, right? The, the, the Israelites, God's chosen, all right? So how do we break or how do we fix the problems overnight? Again, we got to push this information first on who the people are to give yourself pride, all right? All right, so let's let's just get to one of these, right? And I want to just name off a few things that, just a few that our people um, are subject to, right? How do we fix things overnight? If we could stop lying to each other, that's one, right? Stop lying to one another. How many times have brothers got into it over lies? How many times have brother have marriages broken up because of lies? How many times have women got into it and family bicker because of lies? What about owing money, right? Owing money. These things create problems in the community. 
the black community can literally be fixed overnight if we just pay the debts that we owed our brother. Pay the debts that we owed our sisters. Start being truthful on the things that we wanted that we once hid. Start being more upfront. Adultery. How about adultery? Right? Men laying with another man's wife. That fixes problems overnight. A lot of uh, crimes that happen, they call it a crime of passion because the brother came home and found his best friend, his roommate, in the bed with his girl. All right? Adultery. What about dishonoring mom and dad? Matter of fact, let's get Exodus chapter 20. Let's get Exodus 20 and 12. It's the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 20, verse number 12. It says, honor thy father and thy mother. And literally, from uh, 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 verse 12 to verse 17, these are all things that we can literally do overnight, right? But we're going to break these things down one by one through the spirit of Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai. All right, it says, honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land. Think about that. If you honor mom and dad, your days are going to be long on the land. You're going to live a long time. How many young people die because they were out too late? They wanted to join. Their, your dad said, don't join that gang. You ain't got no reason joining the damn gang. And you join the gang and you get hit up. Right? Or your mom say, hey, come home. Or don't be, for you sisters out there, your mom say, put on a dress. Don't be out there in the club uh, 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 drinking anything that somebody give to you. Having some man smile in your face. And then you go in and you go to his crib or he go to your house and God knows what happens. Right? Honor father and mother that thy days may be long. That's very important because your first, the first person that loves you on earth is your mother and father. More importantly, your mother probably loves you more than your father because your mother will bend the rules because she's out of love. Emotions, right? So, Holistically speaking, now we know sometimes mom and dad ain't always righteous. We understand that, right? But for the most part, right, mom and dad is telling you how to live life, how to do things correctly, all right? Uh, how to not stumble and make the same mistakes that they did. So it says, honor your father and mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy power or the Lord thy God giveth thee, all right? That's the first one, right? Let me get these... Let me get Ephesians 6. Let's get Ephesians chapter 6, and I'm going to start from the top. Because Paul is teaching the same thing, right? He's teaching the same thing. He's telling our people to honor mom and dad, to do the things that's required for mom and dad to be proud of you. Mom and dad may tell you to go to school, right? So let's write that down, right? Honor father and mother. All right. Honor father and mother. That's the first thing that we can do to fix black and brown problems. All right. You, you 15, 12 years old, hell, uh, 22 years old. You still haven't lived life yet. Mom and dad is telling you how to live. That's why. And this is why Esau, right? As crafty as Esau is, this is why Esau decided we must get the father out the household. We'll give, mom and, we'll give mom a check, but that man got to go. That authoritative figure has to go because if I take the head off, right? And doesn't Paul teach you in 1 Corinthians 11 chapter that the head of the woman is the man? So if I cut the head off, right? Then the body's going to decay and, and die off. I'm going to make mom depend on the government for money. But there is going to be no authority, no teaching, no direction in that black man's household, right? So honor your father and mother, all right? This is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Children, right? Obey your parents in the Lord. And that's the, that's the key right there. I'm not going to tell you to obey your mom and go get that, that, um, that, that go and enable her to continue to get high off drugs, Right? Enable your father to continue to drink until he pass out. It says, honor your, it says, obey your parents in the Lord. Your mom is telling you to come home early, to not stay out late, to not go to that club, to not go to that house party, 
to put on better clothes, to represent this family better. I tell my son all the time. I tell my daughters all the time. When you leave the house, you represent me and your mother. You represent the whole family, right? So we can fix black and brown problems by going out the house with some dignity, man, right? You have a little bit of dignity. You have a little bit of uh, uh, pride in your, in your last name and in the, your address and where you live and who you represent. That's how we can fix black and brown problems, right? So it says, in the Lord, for this is right. Verse two says, honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Think about that, right? Because the Most High said, if you honor your mother and father, you're going to live a long time. A lot of our people, we dishonor mom and dad. We don't think our father knows anything. So we think we, we know better than him because dad don't know the new terminology. Dad don't know the new dance moves. Dad don't know. Mom don't know the new slang. But guess what? Mom and dad got years and decades upon you where they can give you some game. And, it's going to, and they're going to do it and not want nothing in return, right? This is the first commandment with promise. I'm going to jump over to Sirach 3 and 7 real quick. Sirach 3 and 7 says, let me start at verse 3. Uh, let me start at 1. Hear me, your father, O children, and do thereafter that ye may be safe, right? That ye may be safe. Listen, the father's job is to give his son uh, some game to keep him safe, to have him make the right decisions. Ah, son, you don't want her because look at her. She's for everybody, right? Go with this sister here. Take her on a date. Get to know this sister because she's a little bit more representative of, of you, right? So it says, verse two, for the Lord have given the father honor over the children and have confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons. The most high did these things. The most high. Listen, your mother going to give you wisdom. Your father going to give you instruction. Right. The most high is going to give you wisdom. Right. Through the father and your mother's going to give you. I'm so The most high is going to give you uh, instruction through the father and wisdom through the mother. All right. Verse three says. Whoso honored, whoso, whoso honored his father, making an atonement for his sins. I just want to stop right there. That, that, this is great right here. This is good information. I'm going to read it again. Whoso, whoso honored his father, maketh an atonement for his sins. You know why? Because your father is going to give you gain that you can avoid later in life. Right? Your father's going to tell you things so when things come up later in life, you can avoid that, right? You can avoid that trap. You can avoid that problem later. And that's how you atone for your sins, right? By honoring your father. You keeping the law. Verse four, and he that honoreth his mother is as one that layeth up treasure, right? Because you get she giving you that wisdom. She giving you that understanding on how to execute your father's instructions, all right. Verse five says, whoso honoreth his father shall have joy of his own children. You know why? Because if I honor my father and I do what's right by my father and I do the right thing, guess what? When I have children, I'm going to take my father's words. I'm going to take my mother's instructions and wisdom. I'm going to apply it in my family. And then my son is going to inherit it. You want to talk about an heirloom, the laws, statutes, commandments, right? instructions are the proper heirlooms to give to your own children. Okay? And when he maketh his prayer, he shall be heard. He that honoreth his father shall have a long life. And he that is obedient unto the Most High shall be a comfort to his mother. All right? So again, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 2 says, Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. And you see all the promises in Sirach chapter 3 that you benefit from by just being honorable to mom and dad. All right. Look at verse three, that it may be well with thee. Again, this is Ephesians six and three, that it may be well with thee and thou mayest live long on the earth. Hallelujah. All right. All praise to the most high. Verse four says, and ye fathers. Now, you fathers, listen to this. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath 
Think about that. Don't encourage a son to, to, to go off, right? Provoke not your children. Don't give him wrong instruction. Don't give your child wrong uh, uh, orders, okay? But bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, meaning teach them the law, statutes, and commandments. That's what that means. Bring them up in the admonition of the Lord. Paul right here is teaching doctrine, right? Proverbs 22 and 6 says what? Train up a child. Let me just get it real quick. Proverbs 22 and 6. Hopefully this is good. Hopefully y'all taking notes. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And that's how you have joy in grandchildren. That's how you have joy in your children's 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 children. You got to give them these commandments, these laws and statutes. You got to instill the fear of the Most High at an early age. So when they grow up, they can do the same thing and do the same thing. It's, it's, it's a long list of things that we got to do as fathers, right? So again, honor father and mother. This is how we fix the black and brown problems overnight. Literally overnight, we can fix these problems. All right. What about, um, let me see. Let me get Romans 13. Let me get Romans 13 and 8. It's the book of Romans. All right. Chapter 13, verse number 8. <clears throat> oh, no man, anything. But to love one another. I'm going to stop right there. How many times have beef, have, have men had problems with other men because he owed me money and I saw him going to go buy that new car? Yo, I heard, I heard you just got a brand new pair of shoes, but don't you owe me $100? All right. Now we got beef. Then beef turns into strife, contention, hatred. Then the next thing you know, somebody's dead. And it all goes back to certain things that we could have prevented in the beginning. It says, oh, no man, anything. Yo, if you got a debt, bro, just pay the debt, right? If you got a debt to somebody, sis, just pay that debt. She did your hair and you told her, I'll get you next week when I get my paycheck. When you get your paycheck, give her some money, something, right? I don't want to hear about you at the movies. I don't want to hear you about... Uh, out there whining and dining and, and riding around in a brand new car, right? When you owe somebody money, pay him up, right? That's the law. Don't let the sun go down and you owe that man his wages, right? Don't let that go down. Don't let that happen. Don't be a part of that. Don't be that brother, right? Don't be that sister. Yeah, I ain't gonna get my money. That brother owed me, you know, $20 and I saw him re-upping and, 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 and buying an eighth, all right? Eighth is, eighth is this, this amount of money. Remember that, um, go off real quick, but when you go back to watch um, Menace to Society and uh, Samuel Jackson, and they all paying, playing spades at the table and the brother just got out the joint and Samuel Jackson said, you know, you owe me my money. And the brother said, I ain't got the money. And then what happened? His father, uh, uh, Cain's father, uh, kill the other brother in his own home. And this is how we fix the black and brown problems overnight. Oh, no man, anything but to love one another for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. That's how we uh, fix the black community overnight, right? Let's, let's write this down. Oh, no man, anything, right? Oh, nothing, right? And then love one another. All right. Hopefully y'all are writing this down. All right. Verse 9 says, it says, for this, for this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Didn't we just talk about that in the beginning? Adultery causes problems in the black and brown community. Right. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal, right? So don't look at the blood. Look at the bloods and crips. Look at the Latin kings. Look at when I'm where I'm from. You got essays, longos, right? You got all these Mexican gangs. You got uh, gangs. You got black gangs rolling this, rolling that, bloods, all that, right? So it says, "Thou shalt not kill." One of the things 
that these gangs do is they kill each other. They kill one another, right? I never seen Crips ride on a, a, a Ku Klux Klan rally and, and get bodies. I never seen any Longos or essays do the same thing and go and disrupt a Klan meeting and get bodies. The most bodies come from our own people, killing our own people, right? So it says, thou shall not kill, which is murder. Thou shall not steal, right? That's another thing that plagues the black community, stealing, theft, right? Thou shall not bear false witness. You lying on that brother. You lying on that sister, right? Thou shall not covet. You want that brother's rims. Let's go back to minister society. What did Cain do when he seen the brother with the rims in the damn drive-through in the cookout? I mean, was it cookout? <laughs> it was some, some fast food, right? He went and robbed that brother because he wanted those rims. Thou shall not covet, right? He stole it because of covetousness, right? Covetousness leads to theft. Covetousness also leads to adultery, right? And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in the same, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. We got to start loving our own brothers as we love our own self. That is how you fix the black and brown community overnight. Start loving one another. Don't just say, oh, I love this. Oh, I love that. I love this. I love that brother. I love, no, show it, right? Let us not love in tongue or in speech but in deed and in what? And in truth. You show love because it's an action word. You're not saying it, all right? Verse, verse 10, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. If I love you, I'm going to tell you to do right. If I love you, I'm going to tell you what to eat according to this word. If I love you, I'm going to tell you who not to marry according to this word. If I love you, I'm going to tell you to put clothes on according to the words of God, right? And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. And think about that. Turn on the news, read the newspaper, open up Google. You're going to see the news that prophecies are literally being fulfilled by the day, by the day, by the night. Prophecies are being fulfilled and we're going to fix the black and brown problems overnight. Just take notes and apply this to your life, right? Verse 12, the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and everything we talked about. Uh, uh, covetousness, dishonoring mom and dad, owing money, bad marriages, idolatry, adultery, right? These are the things, these are darkness, right? And let us put on the armor of light. The, and light is what? The law, right? The light is the law. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting, in drunkenness. A lot of our people are, are habitual drunkards. Let's just call it what it is. A lot of our people are habitual alcoholics. They wake up, drink, pull up, drink, you know what I'm saying? Everything they got to drink. They got something called a functional alcoholic, right? Anybody ever heard of that? A functional alcoholic or a social drinker. When you get around people, you got to have a drink, right? Next thing you know, you are a habitual drinker. You are fun I got to get drunk to go to work. I got to get high to eat. I got to get high to go to sleep. I can't, I feel like I can't Break down the Bible unless I smoke a blunt. People think like this. I got to get high to break down the prophecies. And then they doctrine be hella off. They Listen, they got to get drunk to go, to go to camp. They need liquid courage. I need a little bit of boost in my system to go teach the words of God. When did God ever say, get, take a little bit of this shot of cognac and you're going to teach mighty? God never said that. Brothers put they brothers and I'm gonna just say it. Brothers have put their faith to go out there and teach with a little bit of drink in the actual alcohol into the substance and not fasting. You want to know how to teach on the streets better? Fast. You want to you want to really burn up the block and and torch the streets with the word of God? Just go on a fast and go teach the words of God. And you tell me what's better.
You tell me how to get your liquid courage then. But everybody, not everybody, a lot of people put their trust and their faith in drunk and being drunk and drinking too much, right? Verse 13 says, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering, right? A lot of us chamber a whole lot of women. I got news. Watch this. A lot of men push the Bible to get women. You go out there on the streets to teach to get women, right? You go, hey, listen, if the truth, if, if the shoe fits, it just fits, right? And you can clean that up. But brothers will go out there and teach the word of God just to get a date, just to get women, just to show how smart they are, right? Just to get this called chambering, right? You want to get into the bedroom of that sister, right? A lot of, a lot of times our women want to get into the bedroom of that brother, right? And they're not ready for that. They're not ready for that lifestyle. And wantonness, not in strife and envying, right? Think about that. If we took envy out of the black and brown community, we would change like that overnight, right? Like that overnight. If brothers kept the Sabbath day, if the black community kept the Sabbath day, our economy goes up. If we started, watch this, if, if black and brown people only bought from other black and brown people, our economy goes up, our money becomes to recycle a lot longer. The black dollar recycles longer. The, the, the Hispanic, the Native American dollar recycles that much longer, right? But instead, we so quick, we so eager to go and spend money over here at these white establishments and the so-called, and I'm just using the white man as an example, but you also have people that go and, and patronize the Chinese, the Japanese, East Indians, Pakistanis, right? Arabs, Ethiopians, right? All these, uh, all this different, let's, let's talk about food. Let's talk about clothes. Let's talk about whatever, services, plumbing, all that, right? I try to make sure that I at least, if my brothers can do it, I try to employ my own brothers because that's the law, right? So it says, envying, verse 14, but put ye on the Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. And a lot of our people are led by the flesh, right? So let's write that down, right? Uh, lust of the flesh. You can literally fix black and brown problems by putting off the lust of the flesh. Stop being a drunk. Stop waking up and you want to go get drunk off the white man's liquor. I, I, I'm not saying you cannot drink. I'm not saying that. Every now and again, it's okay to drink. It's okay to sit. But a lot of times our brothers are drunkards. Waking up with, there should be no reason you waking up with a hangover. Your food tastes bad. You gain weight, right? You got a hangover. It kills your brain cells. You can't remember the precept. And let's just be honest. If you see a brother out there teaching and he's drunk, he's not going to remember none of the stuff that he's talking about. Right? That's why they call it what? They call alcohol what? They call it a spirit. Right? It's called spirits for a reason. Lust of the flesh. Alcohol qualifies. Getting high qualifies. Right? Uh, uh, what about um, covetousness? These are all lust of the flesh. I like that brother's red. She look good. She's always at camp. You know, she's studious. She's quiet. And you looking at that brother's rib. And next thing you know, you lusting over that brother's rib. And the next thing you know, when y'all talk, you finding ways to kind of cozy up next to that brother's wife. Or you find yourself daydreaming about her. Yeah, I wish I said, if you think about uh, adultery, then that's adultery. You ain't got to do the act. Right? The act is just one part of it, right? That leads into you, but before you do the act, you think about it first. You ponder, you meditate on that. That's why we said to meditate on what? Day and night. The law. You must meditate on the law day and night. All right? Again, this lesson is about how to fix 
black and brown problems overnight, all right? Let me get Exodus 20. Let's go back to the Ten Commandments. Let's get Exodus 20. Last time we left off, right, we said, what? Honor the father and mother, thou shalt not kill or thou shalt not murder. Look at verse 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Think about this. King David had his whole kingdom. All 12 tribes was under his rule. He was defeating the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Edomites, Philistines. He set up the kingdom for his son Solomon to inherit it. But his only problem is he was an adulterer, right? He, he slept with another man's wife and had that man murdered, right? Talking about Uriah the Hittite. So adultery qualifies. We can fix the black and brown problems if brothers just stop making music, movies. We got so bad as, as black and brown people that we actually glorify adultery as, as, as so-called black and brown people, as so-called followers of God, right? And our women are proud adulteresses, right? Let's just think about that. Women got uh, men for every uh, uh, asset or facet in her life, right? Somebody take her out. I mean, she not doing that for nothing. He ain't taking her out for nothing. He gonna get something in return. She got a guy at her job to, to buy her lunch. He ain't, if he's smart, he ain't doing that for nothing, right? You got, she got a main dude at the house that they live together. Then she got a sugar daddy to pay for her books. All women can be proud adulteresses as well. Proud of it, right? And then think about the hot girl summer two years ago. How many hot girl summers resulted with, with children, STDs? And look, think about this. The, the child grows up not knowing their father. Or that child might have been aborted. Talk about abortion, right? How do we fix the black and brown community? By keeping our children alive. By having our children grow up with their fathers. Having our mothers become more submissive to their fathers, right? To their husbands. That's how we fix the black and brown community. But now, instead, we have what? We have a proud adulterer and proud adulteresses. And that's not going to fix anything. And we got to start watching the music that we subject ourselves to. Our children are listening. Our children's brains are like sponges. So you playing this music and then she grow up or he grow up emulating the songs. We're not going to fix the black and brown community by the music, by the, two, the TV shows and the movies we watch. I don't care how good Tyler Perry makes these movies. I don't care how good the song sounds. I don't care what they saying in some of these reality TV shows. If it's not helping the black community or the Hispanic or the brown community is detrimental to our people. And it has to be eradicated right away. Right away. You got to X that out your life. If you want to serve the Lord, you must first X out the things that's detrimental to our people. Right? Adultery is the number one, one of the top things that we see that plague our people, that plague our community. Adultery, drunkenness. Look, just go by any MLK Right. And you're going to see drunk men on the streets, on the bus stop, just drinking all day. You want to fix it? Get the alcohol out the system. Go on a fast. We need more camps in these so-called hoods to go out there and blaze it up and build our people up. All right. Adultery. Right. Let's talk about that. Let's 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 let me put that down. That's less of the flesh. Right. Adultery. Right? I don't care. I don't care how she look. If she belong to somebody, she off limits, bro. Right? I don't care how bad your marriage is. You should not look for love with another man if you're a woman. If you are a woman and your marriage is bad, being with another man ain't going to fix it. Your, your husband is not going to get better because you went and cheated on him. That's the lust of the flesh that made you become an adulteress finding yourself staring at that sister's husband, right? And you married yourself. You already married and you looking at another man. Or well, watch this. Our, sometimes our women compare their husbands to other men. I wish you had money like this guy. I wish you can take me out like this brother could. 
That's adultery. Spiritual fornication. All right. We're fixing the black and brown community overnight. All right. Uh, Exodus. Exodus chapter 20, verse number 15. Thou shalt not steal. Theft. Right? Theft. You stole the man's shoes. Now he want payback. Now he want vengeance. You just stole this man's wife. You, of course he's going to be mad. Right? Our, our brothers, you got to be living in a different world. Right? If you think that you're going to steal, you're going to covet, you're going to commit adultery and not expect someone to come and claim that stuff back. They want to claim everything back. You got another thing coming. You, what world do you live in where you think you could just live life and commit all these different uh, violations against your brother, against the most high God, and then think nothing's going to happen? Right? What's the brother that, uh, was it last year? And, and was it Tennessee? Memphis, Tennessee, I think, where the, the brother was beaten up by the police. Was it Nichols or something like that? I forget the brother's first name, right? But he was beaten up by the police, right? And they, they beat him up to death, right? And everybody was talking about, and I mean, you know, he didn't understand this information, right? That's why we got to go out there and teach. But if you sleeping, because reportedly, allegedly, I'm not there to say yes or no, but allegedly the brother was sleeping with one of the police officers' wives, right? And... It's sad, but we're talking about how to fix the black and brown community. Adultery causes a whole lot of problems. Nobody is that fine to commit adultery against. Nobody is that fine. So we got to check that adulterous spirit. We got to check that spirit of theft and stealing, right? What about uh, people that, you know, uh, uh, make um, deals and then the deals ain't what the person signed up for? Right? Backhand, under the table deals. And it's not what you bought. It's not what you was expecting. Now you on the streets looking for that brother. You got to hire a hitman to go get your money back. We said, oh, no, no, oh, no man, no money. Love one another. Right? Get rid of the lust of the flesh. Your flesh will get you killed. Right? It says, thou shalt not steal. Let me get another precept real quick. I want to get 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. I'm going to get 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. It says, let me get verse 10. Nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkard. Let me just start at 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Think about that. Be not deceived. Don't be deceived. I don't care what your pastor telling you. He lying. All right. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators. A lot of, a lot of fornication. Right. Nor idolaters. People are into idolist things. They idolize this, right? Idolatry will get you killed. Nor adulterers. We just talked about adulterers, right? Nor effeminate. We can fix the black community if men just became men and put off that effeminate spirit, right? Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Verse 10, nor thieves. A lot of theft going around, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. We can literally fix the black community if we just get rid of these characteristics that's contrary to, to our people, right? Let me get Romans. Let me get right back to Romans chapter 1, verse 28, right? Romans 1 and 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. The things that are convenient to our people when we have the positive things in the black community. We have fundraisers, right? The black and brown community has fundraisers, barbecues, cookouts. I mean, you can even say uh, prizes and giveaways. These are all sincere, right? Those are convenient to our people, but there's also things that are not convenient to our people, right? And we just listed them off. It says, verse 29, but being filled with all unrighteousness, 
Here's the unrighteous things that are not convenient to our people. Fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, and whisperers. Think about that. Think about that. All these things that I listed off, right? Fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, and whisper. These are 10 things. Thing, these are 10 unrighteous characteristics that if we cleaned up, we can fix the black and brown community. Literally, overnight. Overnight. No questions, no problems have, right? Everybody's good. Everybody's, everybody's what they would say, kosher. All right? All these things that we're talking about. Look at verse 30. Backbiters. Haters of God. Despiteful. Proud. A lot of pride has, has plagued the black and brown community. Boasters. Inventions of evil things and disobedient to parents. We just started off by saying one of them was not, not uh, honoring your mom and dad. Without understanding covenant breakers. How many times have we made uh, covenants with our own people? Deals with our own people, right? And they broke it. Without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God. Now, here's the kicker, right? A lot of times our people, because of the doctrine that we get in church, they don't know the, the, the judgment of the Most High God. They think you can just live life and things are going to be good. This is why it's important for us to teach the words of God properly. Because your pastor had you thinking you can do what you want to do. And that's, that's not the truth, right? That they which commit such things are worthy of death. Right? And we just talked about the brother that, that just got, well, last year, right? He was murdered or he was killed by the police. Right? And it was because of what? Well, the understanding is he was he was an adulteress. He was adulterer. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. A lot of our people have pleasure in all these things that we just listed off. Think about that. Think about that as a so-called Hebrew Israelite. Think about that as a so-called black and brown person. How to fix our, our, our problem overnight? We got to clean up these words, these covenant breakers, uh, 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 despiteful, these prideful brothers, these boasters, right? When you boast about certain things, or you proud about certain things, you showing your watch off in the hood and everybody's starving. You know somebody gonna do something wicked and, and, and kill you for that watch, right? You're actually breeding people to covet the things that you have. So we gotta stop the pride. All these things we can clean up overnight and literally make our people that much better, right? I got a few more, then we're going to uh, shut it down. Hopefully, y'all are still with me, right? Uh, so we went, let's go back to Exodus 20, verse 15. Thou shalt not steal, right? We, we discussed that, right? Do not steal. Do not steal. Let me get Ephesians 5, chapter 1. I mean, chapter 5, verse 1, right? Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 1. Like I said, I won't be much longer. <clears throat> this is the book of Ephesians, chapter 5. If I can find it, here we go. Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 1. It says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Hamashiach also have loved us and have given himself for us. Now think about that. What Yahweh Shai did was he gave himself for us, right? He gave us grace as well. He, he was patient with brothers. He was patient with sisters. When that sister was found committing adultery, Christ wasn't there to find her in adultery. He said, look, go and sin no more. I'm not going to condemn you. Go and sin no more. You know what our brothers do that are teaching we will condemn somebody that don't know the law, that not give grace to people. We don't give grace to people. We don't give love to people. We find someone half dressed. We find somebody that's stumbling down the block and we just scourging that brother, hitting that brother with scriptures, 
making him feel like he's less than, making her feel like she's less than. She wants to fight now. He want to fight you because the word cut like a two-edged sword, right? But where is the, the building up? Look what Christ, look, let me read it again. And walk in love as Christ hath also loved us. Christ can literally hold you to the same standard that you hold brothers to when you teach his word, right? Christ can do the same thing to you. So nobody is, is free of, 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 of getting it, right? But we're so quick to give it, but we don't want to receive it, right? It says, and walk in love as Christ hath also loved us and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Are we, are we willing to sacrifice ourselves for our brother? Sometimes you got to say, you know what? You're right. You're right. We ain't even got to talk about that. Here's what I'm going to give you. A list of some simple commandments to keep. And as you get built up, then we can take off some of the other things that's weighing you down, brother. But a lot of times we come out and we cut the head off for all, right, right away. Right? Verse, verse 3. But fornication... We talked about that, right? Let's write that number. Let's write that one down, right? Lust of the flesh, right? These all are subgroups of lust of the flesh, right? These are all subgroups, lust of the flesh, adultery, fornication, um, backbiting. Uh, uh, what's another one? Dishonor mom and dad. We talked about that. Owing money, right? Uh, 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 covetousness. All these are lust of the flesh, right? But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not once, let it not be once named among you as become of saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking. Think about the foolish talking. The foolish talking. A lot of y'all gossip too much. That plagues the black and brown community, right? Let me write that down, right? Foolish talking. All right, gossip. Reminds me of that sister Wendy Williams, right? Wendy Williams has made her name popular by gossip. They got something called a gossip column. Now we got something called the T. I'm going to give you the T on this. And you ready for this? And y'all just be sitting up there talking about somebody, right? Spreading rumors, spreading lies. Bearing false witness if it, if it comes to it, right? Talking about other people's issues. What's going on with her marriage? What's going on with his job? What's going on with his money? Why they can't yada, 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 right? All these things. So it says, it says, uh, uh, foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving thanks. For this you know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor a covetous man who is an idolater have any inheritance in the kingdom of Hamashiach and of God. So what about idolatry? Let's put that down, right? How to fix the black people, the brown people overnight, our problems? We're reading it, right? Get rid of idolatry. Have any inheritance in the kingdom of Hamashiach and of God. Verse six, let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Hey, eliminate yourself from these people that, that go into this stuff that's not convenient for our people, right? Eliminate, excuse yourself from people that are gossiping. Sometimes, sometimes you'll find the same name, the same face in all problems. Every time I see a problem, I see this brother. Every time there's a problem coming around, I, I hear your name part of it. I hear her name a part of it. It's a problem, right? Re remove yourself from that, it says, right? Verse eight, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light, for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to stop. Whew, that's, that's heavy. Look at verse 12. I'm going to read it again. 
For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Now, it has become popular to be an adulterer. You are the man in the black and brown community if you can lay with this man's wife, right? Where they put a diss record out. You got rappers, right? Rappers beef with each other. And a rapper will win or lose a battle based off the words that he says. Now, if these words are facts, right? These are facts. That gives it that much more oomph. You have that much more oomph when I say things about you, right? Now, when we start talking about family and making it personal, for some reason, our people relish and, and, and love that type of lifestyle. So the heart of the diss record is the more factual. Now, if you can lay with this man's wife, right? And, and the child is really your child and you taking care of it. All these things that are embarrassing that brother. And then of course, over time, what do we see? Murder. Look at Tupac, right? I, I don't know who killed Pop. I don't know who killed Pop, but I do know some of his diss records was about being an adulterer. Listen to the first couple words that hit him up. Well, he dissed Biggie Smalls, right? And what was he talking about? Adultery. And we talk about how the Most High taking people's lives. The Most High is not pleased with the things that our people put on, on, on the records. He, and it used to be a shame. Our people, it used to be a shame to be an adulterer, right? King David tried to cover up his adultery by having Uriah go sleep with his wife so the baby can be deemed Uriah's and not King David's, right? Because it was a shame to be an adulterer. Now we relish, we revel, we big up that brother. Hey, I heard you, you, you slept with old girl. I thought she was, yeah, oh, you the man. We make movies about it. There's no shame in being an adulterer anymore. There's no shame in being an adulteress anymore. Let me read it again. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. It used to be a shame to be a damn uh, thief, to covet, to be an idolater, to dishonor your mother and father, to, to be a damn, uh, um, to, to speak a lie. You known as being a liar, brothers ain't dealing with you. You come in over and you got gossip. It used to be a shame to be the man with the gossip. Now they paying people millions of dollars to be uh, the, the gossip colonist. I'm going to read on Ephesians 5 and 13. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light and everything's going to come out. Everything is going to come out. Whether you think you hiding it or not, it's going to come out. Right. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore, he said, awake thou that sleepest. And arise from the dead, and Hamashiach shall give you light. That's why we try to tell our people, if you want to be able to escape this stuff, you got to come, you got to awake, know who you are. Come back and be the man that God designed you to be, right? Come back and be the sister that the Most High God designed you to be. Verse 15, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, rede redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And listen to this, 18. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Meaning, verse 19 is basically telling you to, to meditate and keep your mind occupied in this book. Verse 20, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. All right, I'm gonna get a few more. Let me get Leviticus 19. Let's go back and we're gonna rebuke this spirit of being a gossip. Uh, uh, it's, 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 a, it's actually an effeminate spirit, right? But it's more than an effeminate spirit it's a spirit because even the women shouldn't be known for gossip. I hate when people try to make the effeminate spirit 
as if women, it's okay for women to gossip or to, to talk or tell bear, right? No, women, y'all shouldn't do that either. I've seen a lot of families, right? Not gonna name no names, right? But I've seen a lot of people and families be destroyed because that wife couldn't keep her mouth shut. She just gotta say something to somebody and talk bad about somebody and bear false witness against a sister without proof. And then another sister is listening in, right? And then you got one sister that's listening and she leave. She did the right, the one that left did the right thing, right? I don't wanna be named amongst this gossip, amongst this tail bearing. I'm out. I'm not listening to this. Y'all shouldn't do it either. And the sisters that stayed behind and started talking about another sister and they didn't, they don't like her and she's into this and she's into that. Let me write that down, right? Gossip. Gossip. Gossip, right? Especially if you accuse somebody and it's, and it's not true. You lying on somebody and it's not true, right? And then something happened to your family. Something happened to your loved ones. But it goes back to where you keeping the laws of God. All right. I mean, I'm going to just say it like that. Right. So we got to stop the gossip. That's how we fix the black and brown problems overnight. All right. This is Leviticus 19, 16. It says, thou shalt not go up and down as a tail bearer among thy people. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. Right. It's all the tail bearing, the gossip. I got the tea. I got the information and gossip is very, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's seducive, right? Gossip is a very seductive element in our speech, in our language, in our conversation, right? If you have, if you are a gossiper, you are very, very, uh, you're going to have a lot more people that want to come and listen. Everybody want to hear that gossip. I'm reading it again. Thou shall not go up and down as a tale bearer among thy people. You tell Baron, you sitting by the campfire with your liquor, drunk, and you got all the information about this other brother's lifestyle. You, you got all the information about this sister's lifestyle, what she into, and it's nothing good. Nobody's tell Baron about good deeds. No one's gossiping about what that brother went and fed the homeless. No one's gossiping about when that brother went and gave his last to uh to that brother that brother the brother gave gas money for the other brother to come to camp no one brings that up no one's bringing up the good things that that brother is doing no one's sharing the videos when it's a building between two people we love drama we love gossip right you got to remove yourself from that you find yourself in a conversation about gossip you got to rebuke those people immediately I'll be the first to say about myself, I found myself gossiping and then another brother corrected me. And you know what? He was right. He was right. Hey, you right. You, you right. I, we shouldn't be talking about that brother like that. Let me stop the gossip. Let me stop the tail bearing. Right? It's not right. Now, we also should be able to get big up that brother. If you're going to open your mouth and start talking about brothers, let's start bringing in some of this good information that that brother's done. All oh, praise to the most. I got two more. Matter of fact, it's my last one. All right. So gossip. What about um, the structure? Marriages, right? Who me? Marriages. Marriages. Marriage is hard. Right? If you're not working on your marriage, it's hard. Right? Some of our sisters don't want to submit to that man because he ain't making no money. I'm not. I, I got woman got a problem. She like this. I got a problem with submission because he ain't making no money. When does money qualify for submission or not? When does that qualify for submission or not? Right? What if, how about this? Let's revert, let's reverse it, right? What if a brother started holding his wife accountable because she can't have children? Because we understand that the man is to provide. He is to provide. So a woman will make the excuse of not listening to her husband because he can't provide like she wants him to. He's trying, he's trying, but 
He not providing like I, like I want him to. So I'm not going to submit. Until you can provide, I'm going to submit. Well, what if that brother said, listen, I'm going to find me three or four wives, right? Because you can't give me no, no children. Now it's not fair, right? So there's no stipulation on submission. If that's your husband, you submit. It, it, it doesn't have to be because he ain't making no money or not. That's not what submit. You're not fully submitting to that man if, he, if there's a stipulation behind it. That's not real submission. Your submission, I'm talking to the sisters right now. Your submission to your husband is based on stipulations. Well, if you make 100 grand a year, then I'll submit. But if you make 50, 40 grand a year, then I'll think about it. That's not submission. You're not fully submitting to a man if, if it's based on money. Right? That submission should come with, is he teaching you the right thing? Now, of course, the man, if a man can make a hundred million dollars a year, of course he would. So it ain't like brothers ain't trying to go out here and make money for their families. But that woman should still submit to her husband regardless of what he's what he's making. But if he's telling you to go off, then y'all need counsel. You need counsel if he's telling you to go off. Hey, go out there and make me some bacon, right? No, you're not submitting to that. It's, it's, it's against the laws of God. But if he's saying, hey, look, can you, you mind putting some fringes on me? Help, help me out with this. And, and the woman is like, I'm not doing that because you ain't making a hundred grand a year. That's not full submission, all right? So let's get Ephesians 5 and 21, right? Let's get Ephesians 5 and 21. And this is another thing that we have a problem with when it comes to the black and brown community, right? Submission and how to take care of your families, how to structure your families, how to structure your household, how to structure your children, right? How to make things easier for them to get it, how to teach your families. Brothers, brothers, if your family, and I, I can't stress this enough, if your wives and children are getting a little bit of this truth, if you out there teaching the words of God more than you teaching your family, you going off, right? Your first ministry is your family. So if you find yourself spending hours and hours and hours teaching two thirds of our people and your wife and kids don't know this information, you going off and you need to go home and teach your family first before anything. All right. That's just the just of it. The, the, the world should hear your ministry after your family has heard it first. That's what I'm saying. I can't say it any other way. Teach your family first and then the world's going to follow later. The world don't care about you. The world ain't submitting to you. The world is two thirds. They're going to throw cocktails in your face. They're going to belittle you. They're going to throw eggs at you. They don't got your best interests at heart. They're not paying your bills. They're not raising your children. None of that. Your first, you should suit and you should sew up and tighten up your family first and then go out there and teach the people. A lot of times our brothers just disregard the family and they go out there and teach on the streets first. And that's going on. You're working backwards. Now your wife has a, uh, 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 she's built up a wall towards camp. She's built up a disdain for camp and the brotherhood. She don't want to submit to you anymore because this truth is hard. And it's, it's a complete 180 of what you've been living life as. You've been doing Christmas, New Year's, uh, uh, damn Thanksgiving. What's another one? Mother's Day. You asking a woman to get rid of Mother's Day, her favorite time to chill with her mother and have her kids love her. You telling your woman to get rid of that, but she don't know why. She don't know the words of this book. She don't know how to submit to the book, the book of the most high, right? So first things first, straighten your family up and then everything else will follow. It should follow, right? Ephesians 5, 21. It says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. We got to submit ourselves one to another. A man got to submit to his, his wife by teaching her how to submit to him, right? A man should teach, should, should submit to his wife what I mean by submit to his wife, I'm not saying that he's under the woman. Let's not be simple. What it means to submit to your wife is to listen to what she needs, right? 
Listen to what she needs. What's required of you? She says, babe, I need to learn the laws of the most high. Well, and this is you. Well, just read. You're not teaching her. You're not breaking nothing down. Now you want her to submit to you, right? Or she's asking you to stay home and help her out with the children. Now I got to go do this. I got to do that. X, Y, and Z. Now you have problems in the household. Black and brown problems, right? Start off in the household. They start off in the confides of your own home. Financial problems, right? Uh, uh, problems with submission. Problems with the doctrine. Problems with how you carry yourself. They all start at home. We can literally fix the black and brown problems overnight if we start fixing marriages. Start fixing these households. Brothers, you, you got a baby mama and y'all together, but you ain't committing to her, right? You ain't committing to that family. You ain't committing to what you got going on because you still trying to see the field. Hey, look, take care of that woman first. Take care of them children first, right? Sew that up. Get that together first. Then everything else is going to follow. The problem is we working backwards, right? It says submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Brothers got to submit themselves to their own leadership, right? Your own leadership, captains, officers, uh, uh, elders, priesthood, all these things. Is a, there's a ranking and a structure that we must submit ourselves to. A lot of times, brothers got the zeal. They want to go out there and teach right away, Right? And that's cool. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But if your superior officer, captain, whoever steps in, you got to yield. You got to yield, brother. Right. Submit yourselves one to another. You haven't done anything to make yourself over your own leadership. You must yield first and foremost. Verse 22. It says wives. All right. Going back to you, sisters. Right. Submit yourselves unto your own husbands. OK. As unto the Lord. Okay, you dishonor the Most High God and Christ if you dishonor your own husband. If you just let's get the ranking real quick. Let's get uh, First Corinthians eleven, right? Women don't really want to hear this, and that's fine, right? But you got to work on yourself first. And I'm gonna get the brothers too. This is First Corinthians eleven and three. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God, right? So it gives you the structure. God, Christ, man, woman, right? Again, God, Christ, man, woman. So again, let's go back to uh, Ephesians 5, 23. For the husband is the head of the wife. That's, that's plain. Women have a problem with that. If you have a problem with submitting to the man that you had children with, that you open your legs to, that you've made marriages with and you still can't submit, then the problem is not, you, you gotta take some of that blame, sis, right? You gotta take some of that blame. You got a problem submitting to that man, but, but for whatever reason, y'all got children together, y'all live together, but you can't submit to that man and you want, you gotta eat, you gotta, you gotta eat that bill, okay? You gotta, you gotta take some of that blame. It says the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body. So the same way that Christ saved the body, the husband must save the family by, by being the savior of the body. I can't go out there. There's no reason a man should go out there and teach the words of God and his family don't know nothing yet. Shouldn't happen. You in error, right? You in error if that's the case. Stay home. Build your family up. Build your structure up. This is how we fix the black and brown problems overnight. Men got to be men again. Right? Men got to be men again. Men got to literally become the, 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 the Christ, the Hamashiach of his own family. Giving himself for the family. Giving himself for the, for the children. Giving himself. Listen, if a man has a house he can study properly and have peace in his own home because he took care of that first. 
he becomes that much better. But if you come home and you got the nagging wife, I'm not submitting to you, naked, 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 all that, right? Neck roll, eye roll, you're dealing with that. Um, your, your, your teaching is it's not going to be conducive, all right? And I'm just speaking generally. I know there's one-off scenarios, there's gray area, we get all that, right? Verse 24 says, therefore, as the church is subject unto Hamashiach, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. In everything. It's, it got to be righteous though, right? 25. Husbands, you brothers out there, right? Love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Is the so-called black and brown man, Native American man, willing to give himself for his family? You going to put your body through labor? Or is it too cold to go out there and work that night? Right? I'm too tired. No, you got to give yourself to the church, to your family. Just as Christ did. You want to be, you want to be the, the head honcho. You want to be out of one. Right? Everybody want to be out of one. But when out of one got to do out of one things, then some out of one, some husbands fail. Out of one mean, mean head or lord, right? Teacher, master. So some everybody want to be the, the master in their household, rightfully so, as you should be. But it comes with a big price to pay. It, tum, it comes with a heavy burden, right? Husbands, love your wives, even as Hamashiach also loved the church and gave himself for it. Christ gave himself his body, his life for the church. We got to do the same thing as men, right? That verse 26, that he may sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the wa washing of water by the word. All right, I'm gonna keep reading. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. As a man, you gotta be that, you gotta be that that authoritative figure. You tell your son to take the trash out, you may have to go back and see if he did it. Right? You tell your daughter to go wash dishes. You may have to go back and see if the dishes was washed, right? Uh, you tell your wife, hey, I, I, I need you to go and pick something up from the store. She don't do it, right? You may have to go back and, and, and get it, right? Without spot or wrinkle, just the same way Christ goes back and our elders go back and they check the brothers, right? Oh, you, 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 you at camp late? You come into camp late, you leaving early. That's happened, right? Uh, you come into camp intoxicated from last night. That's happened. And you can't teach today. I could smell the liquor on you. You look jacked up. Your eyes are bloodshot. You see what I'm saying? So it says, verse 27, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Holy and without blemish. So uh, men, men, uh, listen, brothers know the scripture, Ephesians 5, 22, and they want to bring that out with their wife. Keep reading. 28 says, so ought uh, men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. We can literally fix the black and brown problems if men start loving their wives and their families as they love themselves. As if women can submit themselves to their Lord to their kings, to their husbands, right? And do the necessary things for that brother to stay in a good spirit, to have that candle lit by having that oil being uh, in abundance, all right? So let's just recap. We're gonna, we're gonna shut it down. It's, this is the, the, the things that we can do to fix black, pro, black and brown problems overnight. First, you gotta understand who we are as Israelites and love your nation right? Love your nation. That's how you fix black and brown problems. Honor your father and mother, okay? This is the first law that was with promise. So you can live a long time, right? Owe nothing. Pay your debts, right? Pay your debts. Don't owe nothing to anybody. Love one another, right? You got to get rid of that lust of the flesh and all the things that come with it. Adultery, fornication, foolish talking, gossip, right? Get the idolatry out of your life. No idol, no, no idolatry. 
All right, the last two, all right? No gossip, okay? Stop that tail bearing and let's work on our marriages, all right? With that, hope it was edifying. All praise to the Most High.